the placeholder. We want to see now a little bit more about the placeholder. The placeholder is quite interesting because it allows us to reduce the number of macros. As an example here, before we actually start, we will open the macro project. The macro project, this is where we'll be creating uh, some circuits with several different options. But just before we do so, I would like you to synchronize your current project. Uh, let's make sure that everything that is only in project here on the left hand side, so sort by status, move it over, is now uploaded into your parts management. This means that now, from this point on, let's create a new page. This new page will be this 2.2 page that we see here. We'll zoom in in the top left hand corner and here we will start by inserting a device. The device we're looking for is a 1489. Just filter this down. Because you just imported it you should have these protection devices. We'll take the first one in line, the A1C010, which is a 1 amp circuit breaker. We will rotate this, of course, until we get the 1 and 2 left hand side and we'll just place it here. Now, that's good, it's placed. We will just continue and finish it up having a T node on this side, a T node on this side. Uh, you, if you put it actually at the same level, you will have to put in a break point so the two connections don't line up and connect. If you put this right on top, you'll see that the line breaks up. Then we'll put some interruption points, one of them on this side here, call it 100, and 20 VAC1 and we'll put on the other side here a neutral one. Now, of course this is to have some auto connect onto which we can place some connection definition point. On this side here we want a red wire to be defined with a specific wire gauge and this is going to be 16 American wire gauge and on the other side of course it's going to be the same 16 American wire gauge yet a little bit different from the color because on the color side we'll just pick a white color. Now this is good. So we have these and these elements here that will actually adapt each other depending on what placeholder value set we pick. So let's create this. We insert a placeholder. When we place the placeholder we place the first item on the top left hand side and we have to basically place the second item on the right hand side. If that did not happen by default, you can always go back and say select associated objects. You can see that we have the selected associated objects here, right, that are uh, right in this area. And now we can open it. If we open it, this means we have an assignment. On the assignment, you can say only display values that have some current value. This is the interesting portion because it's very easy now to create your variables. The variables are actually nothing else than a bracket open. We'll actually define here the uh, CB part. As you can see, that's the part number of the circuit breaker. Here we have the uh, CB uh, amperage that uh, will be displayed in this property. So if we enlarge this a little bit, you can see that the technical characteristics is the variable uh, CB amp. Uh, then we have the CV part and then if we move down a little bit we should actually find at the connection definition point we should find here the wire gauge so that's basically the wire American wire gauge right that's basically the value 16 and this because we have two wire sets that we define we'll actually have it in two different spots once you hit the apply button you can see here in the value set we have the different uh, variables. Now I'll create here now some value sets. The first value set that I have is a 1 amp and since I actually picked already the 1 amp I can actually select this line again and say um, read in current value sets and this basically will read in all the different current value sets as you can see here. Right? As soon as you hit apply of course this is your first value set. Now we can move on and create the next value set. The next value set will be a 2 amp value set. Now the 2 amp value set is to be used or will use basically a different part number. We could actually just copy and paste it over like this and then go inside the different values and change them right manually like I just do at this point here 2 and 2 amps and this is fine. 
what I can do also is if you do create a new value set and we say okay we want to create let's say the uh, 3 amp uh, value set then of course if you paste whoops sorry about this when you paste in here the values you can actually go and pick them right so you can drill it down uh, same as before you can actually do a part selection like this uh, here 1489 we will find some under protection device this is the 3 amp I just pick it and then of course these informations that go there you either type them in or you copy and paste uh, everything is possible at this point here and you just go about and of course in this case we, we're still using 16 American wire gauge and you can go on and on like this for the 4 amp for the 6 amp etc you just have created the placeholder now once this placeholder is created you can also give it a name here at the top which is basically select the protection and I can call it X amp right or amps whatever and this is basically just the text that shows up at the top there uh, to give you a little bit of an idea what to do with uh, these value sets now from here on you can actually uh, place your macro box the macro box you just basically make sure that everything is inside this macro box the macro box then once you open it afterwards you can assign where the macro will be saved of course by default the macro will be saved in the default uh, that's the best way where you should place it and then in this particular case I think power would be good power distribution and we know it's a 200 VAC and then it's a circuit breaker right uh, I'll just put it as line like this and now I have my new 120 volt VAC now of course I could create several different variants of it with terminals without terminals etc to create this macro, remember the menu, Utility, Generate Macros, automatically from Macro Project. And once this is generated, now of course, if you hit Yes, it's going to do the whole project. If you hit No, it's going to do only that one specific uh, 